Hey there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Manufacturing Day virtual tour of our Zometry office here in Gaithersburg, Maryland. We're going to be joined in just a minute from our host, Greg Paulson. Everybody, just take a second to join us, and we'll get started in just a minute. Thank you for being with us. Okay, testing one, two. Can you hear me all right? Yes, you sound great. All right, can you enable my video? Yes. Can I enable your video? I'm gonna make you a host. There we go. Yep. Okay, that should work. All right, awesome. Okay, very cool. Well, let's see. Yeah. So welcome, everybody. Uh, this is I am going live. So I'm actually got a little steady cam here. So it's kind of fun as we're as we're working through this. But um, welcome to Zometry and our headquarters in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Uh, so uh, I'm my name is Greg Paulson. I'm the director of applications engineering here at Zometry. And today I'm going to do a live tour. We're going to walk through our facility. Uh, talk a little bit about what we do here, what Zometry is and, and some of the services, and, and also show you what we do at, at this physical location because we are a digital manufacturing marketplace. We serve over 60,000 customers uh, within our company. Uh, so there's a lot more than just this facility here, but it's something to celebrate. Uh, so let's just talk about today. Today is Manufacturing Day. Uh, so Manufacturing Day, uh, it's a celebration on the first Friday of October, and it also celebrates throughout the month. And the initiative is through the Manufacturing Institute. Uh, so it's part of the National Association of, Man of Manufacturers. And it's there to kind of educate and celebrate manufacturing, um, encourage uh, future manufacturers, and empower the manufacturing community. Um, yeah, Sarah just said hello. By the way, Sarah is right behind me. Um, if I can move. My steady cam keeps on like drifting there, but there's Sarah. Um, and uh, Sarah, Sarah is here to help answer some questions along the way. This is live. This is us talking, and this is going to be an event where we do we do love uh, answering questions. Uh, so, uh, Sarah, if you can, can you pin my video uh, just so we have that, and um, and that that way I'll give them full screen as we'll walk through. Yep, that should be done. Um, okay. I went ahead and pinned it, so you should be set. Okay, perfect. All right, awesome. So we got everything going on here. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about, about what we are, what is Zometry for those who are not familiar uh, with our business and what we do. Uh, so Zometry is here to solve this problem with procurement, especially pr procurement of custom manufactured goods. Uh, if you've ever had to purchase something custom, like a CNC machine component, a 3D print, sheet metal part, uh, you may have done the dance where you go around searching for a vendor and scrubbing through, or maybe you do a BCC copy of a bunch of different vendors, sending your file saying, please quote this a quantity, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then you wait and you get frustrated and you wait. And then sometimes you don't even get answers back. Sometimes when you get answers back, the prices are all over the place. And that's a, that's a very opaque status in manufacturing. It's, it's, uh, um, it's, you don't always know the right person or what the right price is uh, when you're getting parts. Zometry started a little over a decade ago and we actually put AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to work at the very beginning of this. So what we actually have is something called the instant quoting engine, where you can go online, upload uh, any of your CAD models, we accept most CAD file types, and we use computational geometry, we interpret that 3D CAD file, you get instant pricing and lead times on that, and we're offering over 20 different manufacturing processes across our platform. So we consolidate what you need for your supply chain and whether it's a low volume uh, part or something in production, you could actually work with Zometry to get those needs done. The other problem that we actually solve is this problem in procurement where you uh, can hug a supplier to death. And what I mean by that is you could keep on sending them work till you're sending them work that's outside of their scope or until their, their shop is just full, like where they can't take on more capacity so they get, have to add more lead time. Uh, we use a distributed manufacturing business model we actually use AI machine learning to look at the parts in the project and the scope of the project. And we actually say parts like this in this project with this scope, like these, um, these needs, these details are made well by this supplier. And we have a vetted network of suppliers over 10,000 suppliers that we actually use to, um, 
to achieve, achieve these goals and we use AI to match make. So you may not know who your perfect supplier is, but when you order through Zometry, we're able to make that pair and match make automatically. So we really streamlined this procurement process by giving you pricing lead time and pressing buy and going through, uh, going through that. And for the suppliers, by the way, they love working with us. So we have this vetted uh, supplier network. We call them our Zometry partners. And our Zometry partners uh, have access to a MES, a manufacturing execution system called Work Center, where they're able to take jobs, see, see jobs in real time, take that work, and uh, they'll see what they're going to get paid. They'll see when it's due. They'll see the scope of it and say, that fits. Let's take it. Or they could pass on it and it'll go to the next available supplier. But they see a flow of work on demand, and they're able to not just take that work, but use our platform to track and monitor that work throughout the process. That also gives us visibility and allows us to manage thousands of concurrent orders at any given time. Um, so also, I have, since I have Sarah here, Sarah, do you want to give a blurb on Thomas? Because Thomas is also the Zom Zometry company, and we're, we're sporting. I got my Zometry vest on. Sarah's got her Thomas vest on. But if you want to jump in really quick. Yes, I sure will. Um, and it looks like, I think since you're the host, you actually have to put me on video, but it's fine. I'll oh. just talk. <laughs> um, yes, Thomas is uh, your sourcing platform. So if you're sourcing for materials that don't need to be custom made and custom manufactured, um, Thomas is your go-to place to source those from our audience of industrial suppliers. Um, you can source in 78,000 plus categories on Thomas. So truly everything that you need to keep your, you know, to keep your business running um, and to really control your supply chain and build those relationships directly with industrial suppliers. Um, on the flip side, if you're a supplier yourself and you're looking to grow your business uh, and boost traffic and visibility, there's no place better to advertise than on thomasnet.com. Thank you. Here I am. Uh, then on thomasnet.com, you can work directly with us to build a custom advertising solution and program for you that fits your budget uh, and, and your, you know, you design it from scratch. Um, everything from a profile on thomasnet.com that makes it easy for interested buyers to find you all the way to full service marketing. We can help with SEO. We can help with content generation, website management, you name it. Our team is here to help you grow your business. So both sides, we've got you covered. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. And yeah, this is... Um... Uh, you know, this is just something really exciting uh, for us because uh, whether you are someone who's, you know, needs parts made or someone who's making parts or somebody making hardware off the shelf, if you are in the supply chain, we have solutions for you. Um, I am going to actually, Sarah, I need a hand really quick because I, I am going to put on my safety glasses here because we're about to go walk into the facility and check things out. So um, without further ado, uh, let's, let's go in and I'm going to show you a little bit about Zometry and our Gaithersburg facility. So you also may be asking me this. Um, you also may be asking me this. Hey, Greg, you just talked about we're a digital manufacturing marketplace. Why do you have a facility in the first place? And that's kind of the story of Zometry itself. It's like we actually started uh, here in in Gaithersburg in this facility here as we were building out our business model. We made parts. We have uh, we have expert manufacturers and machinists on hand. Uh, we do three D printing services here. And that really got us the data that we're looking for as we're building out um, building out our business model. Uh, this is just a 7,000 square foot facility, plus so we have another 7,000 square foot facility that we'll walk through. Uh, but with this, has helped us build the backbone of the company. And since then, again, we now work with over 10,000 shops. So what we do mostly here is we see parts come in. Uh, we see parts that are coming in from our um, from our uh, our different suppliers that we may go through a secondary quality assurance uh, program with, or we're going to um, we're going to actually be uh, you know reviewing maybe doing some secondary operations like assembly um, or other services here. So some more value add services that happen in this actual facility than the direct part manufacturing that would be happening with our suppliers. It's a little bit different once I go to, over to our additive. A manufacturing section, which would be 3D printing, where we do have a legacy factory there where we're going to be doing some plastic 3D printing. So what I want to take you to next is going to be our quality assurance facility, talk a little bit about what QA means uh, with us. And I'm in, um, I'm in our uh, Gatesburg facility right now, kind of by our shipping and QA area. Uh, but I think what's really important when I, when I walk through here is, whoa, I am, uh, my gyro cam is uh, going crazy. Um, is is what we do here in QA. So I'm going to move this around a little bit, switch my cam, and go through this facility. 
So when we are making parts, we have to measure them. And we're not just measuring them with rulers, we're using calibrated tools to actually um, test the results of these parts against the technical drawings. Zometry has manufacturing standards for every single of the 20 manufacturing processes that we offer. And with those, they have, um, th that's basically the general that you need. But if you need tighter tolerances or things that are more precision, we still need ways of actually testing and measuring this. Uh, this piece of equipment in front of me is our coordinate measuring machine uh, or CMM. And the CMM is a, is a piece of equipment that almost acts kind of like a CNC machine in the way that it actually has, it moves around and touches the outside of the part. And you can see here that we have this little touch probe, this little ruby tip touch probe here that will go and precisely touch the part and create a point cloud in space. What's cool about that point cloud is if I touch the top of a part in three places, I have a plane. If I touch the part in two places, I, you know, I have a side surface on one side and I can indicate where my part is physically in a virtual world. And then I could command it to do things, measure surface roughness, measure uh, whole diameters, measure, um, uh, measure distances between features and do this on an automated matter. This is an eight foot table because we can make some pretty big parts here. And a lot of our suppliers also have CMM devices, uh, but this is also something that we can do in house. Um, we have other inspection equipment that we use along the way, uh, like a like a Romer arm here, which again is kind of like think a CMM, but I'm also using that for uh, more manually uh, touching out parts here. I have tools like a profilometer. Uh, so a profilometer. So when we say surface roughness, that's that RA value. Um, we have a little tool here called a profilometer that will go across and kind of imagine like a record player kind of scratching the surface, figuring out that deviation on the surface of a part for surface roughness. Uh, so this is, these are all things that we use. Like when you commit to buying a part, uh, especially if you're ordering what we consider a formal inspection report, we're gonna be using calibrated tools, uh, us and the suppliers to actually, actually make these parts. I'll go a little bit in here, but uh, we have about every gauge and no-go uh, no -go gauge known to man because we make so many parts that we have so many different varieties. We have ways to inspect, inspect them. Uh, we're using calibrated tools, calipers, indicators, uh, some really big calipers, and we got some even bigger ones uh, in the back here. Uh, ring gauges, plug gauges, pins, you name it. Uh, this, is, this is what we use from a, um, whoosh, from a bread and butter standpoint. I also, we always have our hand tools like calipers and micrometers. Um, this is a push button uh, measuring system. So this is what I call a digital comparator. Uh, this will kind of look at the side profile of an item and, and outline things like linear dimensions, um, you know, other features that you could see if you imagine a shiny light up from the bottom and indicating through. And what's kind of cool about it is it could also measure multiple parts at the same time. I'm going to pause for a second while we have that here. Uh, this is a live event. I always encourage people, if you have questions along the way, uh, please ask any questions. But um, yeah, feel free to ask any questions while I'm walking to the next section. Let's see, Greg, we have a question about mm -hmm. the quality control machines and the equipment. Yeah. Um, of course, we are international. We have a Turkey office. Do we have the same control machine and equipment in that office as we have here? Yeah, so I mean, the need to measure parts is universal in manufacturing. We need to ship qualified parts. We have receiving inspection because our customers have received inspection. Uh, so that's very, very important to what we have. So uh, regardless of, na of nationality, we have the means to measure and inspect the part, uh, parts fully using certified equipment. Um, this is just what we have you know, in this facility here, uh, especially like Zometry. So we are a certified company for uh, aerospace, so AS9100, uh, ISO 134485 for medical devices. We work with automotive, uh, so uh, IATF 16949 certifications. And of course, defense and export control types like, like ITAR, export restricted, is also in our, in our wheelhouse. Uh, because of that, we have the tools to actually measure those and, and bring those through here. But also, we expect that with throughout our suppliers. So this is just part of the network. But it's uh, something I can show off today during Manufacturing Day. So going to be showing it off. So the other thing to note is that as we are working through, um, you know, as we're working through Zometry, we are getting parts in and out. Uh, so we do have a uh, pretty large uh, shipping and receiving dock here uh, to take in parts. This could be anything from box parts to crated parts. Uh, we even have our own ways of making crates. 
uh, here if we need to, if we have larger components, say like large tube or sheet metal components that we fabricated uh, coming through. Uh, but we have a constantly busy uh, shipping department going on, always, always uh, receiving and shipping out parts as we work through here. And actually, uh, a kind of shift. Greg, I'm gonna, for... oh, go I'm ahead. gonna surface one question. Yeah, um, absolutely. Another a question just about where you just were. Um, it's the, yeah. It says it looks like you have both a three-axis style CMM and an arm style. Do you use one over the other for different applications, um, or what's the difference between the two? Is one a CMM and one a scanner? Can you well, talk to us a little bit more about those? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So we do have. Um, so it, the um, the granite table CMM, the eight foot CMM. Uh, is actually multi-axis, it has a multi-axis probe head. So the head could actually not just touch straight up and down, but I could also tilt it. I could do fun little swirl things if I'm looking for internal holes, holes or I could drag it for surface profiles. Um, it's a very encompassing um, uh, measurement tool. You do need to program that. Uh, so when I have that CMM, I'm just going into my programming software. I am uh, making my virtual setup. I'm telling the tool paths of what I wanted the CMM to do, what I wanted to measure and go through. What's cool about that is I have this upfront labor where I make this, but then I can put the next part on and go again and next part on and go again. So when I have stuff that we do in like serial production, I can use a standard sample size and quickly go through and create a generated report consistently with a CMM. So a CMM with inspection report, which is a drop-down requirement that you could choose on your inspection requirements, that that will dictate that type of uh, need. The probe arm is a little bit more flexible. You can still do amazing things with a probe arm and it's an amazing tool, but it also lets me do measurements on the fly. So create that point cloud without programming. And I'm using my arm to create those features. And then I'm going back into my software and saying, these are what these features correlate to. And I'm, let, I'm having to calculate those measurements, like uh, you know, positional tolerances, for example. Uh, so they, they're both extremely useful tools. And in some cases, then the Venn diagram of their usefulness, there is overlap. But other ways, I have a little bit more flexibility with that arm uh, to, to do that, to do more work on demand. And since we're getting uh, packages in constantly throughout, like um, in this facility, we don't always know what's next. So this allows us to be a little bit more flexible with what we're selecting. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. Another question, just you were talking about standards. Do you use the NIST standards as part of your measurements and SOPs for our work? Um, and then kind of a follow up, what kinds of careers do you have? Do, do we do upskilling and training? And like, how did we go about finding the amazing people who work here? Um, yeah. If you can talk a little about both of those, that'd be great. Yeah, so we, we do use a, a standard sampling plans. I think it's I think what's is like ANSI Z. Um, I, I'm I draw a blank here, but if you go to Zometry's uh, search bar and type in inspection and sampling plans, you'll see that sampling plan listed out, and uh, you could check that link uh, there. So that's that's going to be a place to look for uh, what we do for inspections uh, and sampling. Um, but yeah, we we're not making up standards here. We want to reflect a globally acceptable standard. So whenever there is an industry standard out there, we like to actually bring that in and incorporate that within our business model. Uh, sometimes though, it's very interesting manufacturing standards. Like what's what's you know what do we expect when I bend a tube? It varies from shop to shop. So we have as a marketplace actually played a role in trying to figure out what is industry standard and writing that that out. So it's something that we do um, pretty. Uh, uh, pretty frequently as we look at overarching needs and what is accepted by our customers. On the career side, so first off, zometry.com forward slash careers is a great place to start looking uh, for careers. Uh, we have things, we have careers in every discipline, whether it's the physical manufacturing space, uh, supply chain, case management, uh, sales engineering, uh, sales roles, and then on the, on the, um, on the computational side, of course, we are a technology company. So you're talking about software developers, uh, software engineers, product management roles, um, and uh, computational geometry, data scientists, you name it, we have jobs for it. Uh, so that's, that's where you can look. And we do pull from talent pools. Uh, we, we like to bring a lot of experience uh, here uh, within Zometry. We also have some internship pro cohort programs uh, for those who are go going through uh, education. So look for our cohorts. Uh, that'll launch our career page. Usually, you get the beginning of the year. Is usually when you see that for our summer uh, summer programs. Uh, but we're always looking and encouraging people to to look at our careers at Zometry as we're as we're constantly growing. Um, I'm going to walk us into. So again, I'm like, hey, Greg, you know, we're we're, we're at this shop. 
Now, do you have a shop here? And yeah, we do have some stuff going on. Um, so I am, um, I'm actually by a, a very cool lathe. This is a um, Haas TL1, but it's a, it is a CNC lathe that you can also run like a manual lathe. Uh, and uh, it's, it's actually a newer addition that we have here. Uh, sometimes this helps when, I, when we need to turn down corners, turn down the edges. And we do have equipment in-house to do machining, typically for our assembly and, uh, and value add services. So, we'll, so we have like, for example, I'm, I'm scooting through a couple things here as we have a new air compressor that we're, we have as a backup. Um, but we do have CNC uh, machine equipment, but this is typically not making direct parts. It's, it's usually for things that are secondary operations that work with our value add services that we, that we run uh, more on the vertical integration side. Um, if you're not familiar with CNC machining, uh, this is a you know, bread and butter activity that we do at Zometry. Uh, where I'm taking a stock material, you know, a rod or bar form stock, and I'm using uh, tools in a computer uh, in, in a computer numeric controlled fashion. So we're programming the machine to go and cut out those features. Uh, so you use different tools like, uh, like for example, drills, end mills, uh, key seat cutters here of all different sizes, reamers, you know, uh, tools of all shapes and sizes to produce those features on your parts. And um, and these this is a very very powerful way to make precision components in what I would call the uh, low to medium vo volume production. Uh, as we, and we got a lot of tools, by the way, lots and lots of tools uh, to, to work through. Um, as we add more, um, or sorry, as, as you start adding more technologies, this is also where you had that conversation with Zometry about when to scale. So for example, like I may move to die casting when I am scaling up from CNC machining uh, in quantities. So if say I'm moving to the volume of you know hundreds or thousands, that's when I'm going. That's when I'm going to go and move into a die casting uh, method. And what's great about that is we offer that. So we're able to help grow with you, just like you may grow parts in 3D printing, and then move to um, uh, move into injection molding ultimately with classic 3D printing. Uh, speaking of 3D printing, I'm going to do a quick stop here, but we got a lot more in the other room, so. Uh, but just We've got one little... question, oh, Greg, go uh, just about uh, quality control. Does Zometry software automatically DFM a part before quoting, or how does that work? Oh, yeah, great question. So we do have DFM built into our platform, and especially true if you're actually using some of our apps for SOLIDWORKS, uh, Onshape, and Autodesk Fusion, you get even more robust DFM feedback uh, that helps kind of guide you, especially while you're in the driver's seat. So I definitely recommend looking at those free apps. You can find them under the resources tab on zometry.com. Um, but that's uh, but we do have some DFM feedback that's gonna look at you know process limitations and size based on your geometry. And we also have sales engineers and DFM teams available that can actually help uh, take a look at that, you know, spin the CAD, answer some questions for you. Um, I'm gonna take a quick peek. One more. Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna ah. give you. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> I'm going to you... let you see 3D printing TV while we're, um, yeah, while Ooh, you're talking. Yeah. Look at all those. It's great. Yeah. Um, do you use part and tool setting probes on the CNC machines? Um, so yes, the, those, uh, both those machines are equipped with um, uh, the Renaissance, uh probes. Um, so that's that's something that's useful, kind of like a CMM. Uh, you're, what, what they're talking about, these tool setting probes, it helps sa shave time up front when you're indicating where the part is and you're moving to ops and you're able to kind of measure and verify before, before moving to the next op. That being said, a lot, like I said, a lot of our work here is more for vertical assembly needs. So it's not as important here technically as it would be for you know, production manufacturers where it is a, a big value add to add that type of work um, into your machines. Like, like for example, I would love to have a dedicated fifth axis, but we don't really you know, need that in this, uh, in this zone. Um, what I'm pointing out here, by the way, is these are um, these are uh, 3D printers. So these are uh, Stratasys um, F370 machines. Uh, these are actually I consider them the little guys. Uh, you know, in in our shop here, we have a few of them. So if you ever order stuff uh, that's like ASA, uh, ABS, uh, that's this is going to be where you're going to make those. And you can also see like just the cartons and cartons and cartons of material here. And by the way, every time you see my camera move, it's because uh, my gyroscope wants to stay still. It's doing its job, but I keep on moving. So it keeps on like trying to like fight me on this. So I'm working through. So let me, um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move us around. And show you the polyjet machines. 
yeah, as I rotate my, um, my gyroscope again, it's trying to keep me still. So I'm trying to counter rotate with it. So I'm going to show you Polyjet. So Polyjet is another 3D printing platform here. And we'll go back to FDM. I got a lot more FDMs to show off. Um, Polyjet is a 3D printing platform, though, that, is, that actually is closest in 3D printing to what you call it, like the inkjet printers. I have seven materials loaded. It's depositing these little micro droplets of material down. And, those, um, and the, this printer will actually go and build these parts in this micro, micro matrix. Um, when you see the stuff that's kind of glowing as the light goes over, so the light is curing out that part on this polyjet machine, um, that's actually a gel-like support structure. So in this case, like the you know the, the partial part there you see, is probably a rubber-like component that's being built uh, in this machine, and it has a um, and uh, you can see that gel-like support structure will ultimately support the whole machine here. I do want to show, and I have like part of my mess here, but um. I have these little guys back here kind of showing what can I do with Polyjet? You know, I can go and I can make, you know, full color 3D prints. So Polyjet, I have all these colors and materials loaded. So this allows me to actually go and make very convincing prints. These, these are not real apples. These are, these are actually printed apples here. Um, you can see some 3D scan uh, uh, data. So sometimes you see this use, like it's great with, um, it's a great pair for 3D scanning. Uh, sometimes I'm using Polyjet uh, for um, for adding things like a um, a logo or something, or I just want to have a, a, an enclosure that I'm eventually going to mold, but I make it in my brand color instead. All right, so, but yeah, happy to answer any questions on that as we're going through. Let's see, Greg, do you have any 3D metal printers that use laser powder bed fusion technology? Yeah, so Zometry's 3D printing capabilities, um, like as, a, as far as our marketplace go, covers nine different additive manufacturing processes, seven of which are polymer, two of which are metal-based additive manufacturing. In this case, um, we are not we are only running polymers in-house here. Uh, so um, all the metal is done uh, through, um, uh, through our, our partner services, but we have fantastic metal suppliers that are doing this work. I wanna take a little break here. Uh, uh, as we're as we're walking through, and I'm trying to find like a nice little corner to hide in, uh, but we have, um, we also do a lot of vertical integrations. So, something that happened, you know, we had the pandemic, you know, happened to all of us. And during the during the pandemic, um, we had customers where their supply chain was down. Zometry was still working 24/7 uh, because our, we are have a self healing business model. Uh, we have suppliers. A, a geographically dispersed, so we're able to keep on working, keep on making parts. Uh, but uh, what was happening was we were making parts, but other critical components or things like integrations like assembly weren't happening for our customers. Uh, at the same time, uh, we actually had some open space in the company uh, because we had people working more, more remote. So we converted that open space and took that as an opportunity to start adding services like assembly. Uh, so think mechanical, and I would say um, ESD hard elect, um, uh, electromechanical assembly uh, started to happening here in this facility to add value to our customers. Uh, so this is a this is a flex assembly area. Depending on the projects that we're doing, it changes you know it changes from week to week on what we're working on. Uh, but it's something that we have a lot of tools and equipment uh, to help us you know do do the job. And it's funny because I, I I have to joke about you know rivets and presses because right in front of me. I have like every arbor press known to man, just kind of like in a nice little army, you know, hanging out here. And we have hydraulic presses and riveting features because uh, this is just kind of like if you need to press and squish, squish something together, that's the table for you. Any questions uh, so far as we're going through here? You've answered them all so far. Great. This is great. All right. So it's going to be I'm going to call this. This is time for commercial break. Uh, I'm going to actually be walking to our next facility. I'm going to stay on the line. I'm using this for my cell phone, so hopefully my cell signal will pick up. Uh, but we have a facility right down the street from us where we're going we're gonna to pick up, and that's going to be our additive manufacturing, our 3D printing facility. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to have a, I'm going to walk through two Wi-Fi bubbles, so you may see me glitch out for just a moment as we're doing this.
without a action facility. That, at that time, machining, we actually did have Then we did a, um, uh, we expanded out to the second building here. All right. I'm gonna ask you to repeat that, just cool. the narrative you were just telling. Uh, no worries, I was, like, I was like, ooh, <laughs> it's it's hard for me to see on my side, but I'm coming in the facility now, so I should I should be reconnecting to Wi-Fi. Um, so I was just saying like we had, we ended up expanding to the second building because we were outgrowing the first building. Uh, jokingly, if we could have our neighbors, we would have. Um, but uh, we're we're a little a uh, little further up the street. Uh, but here I am. I am in our additive facility. So I first want to show you again I, what I consider the little guys. They're powerhouses. But uh, I, I want to show you what you may be familiar with with three D printing, which would be desktop machines. So if you've if you ever have taken a dive into three D printing, you may be familiar with this. I have a you know, 3D printer. This is a filament-based machine. I have my feeding material. It goes through here. It goes through a hot end. It'll squiggle back and forth across uh, my build plate and make my 3D. Uh, this is uh, solely for PLA services. So if you order PLA through Zometry. Oh, you got a question? There's one just about uh, custom engineered packaging. Do we handle that? Is that a service that we can do? So packaging services actually, um, we, I'd like to know more about that, uh, but that also may be a Thomas, um, a Thomas thing to look at, depending on what you are, um, what you're describing there. Uh, Cause I could see that as a few different things there, uh, but we, we can, you know, we can white label package and, and work with that, especially with our vertical services, but it just depends on what you're, what you're asking us to do. But we're always happy to review that. Um, but anyways, like yeah, these are these are just a few of our uh, 3D printers that are actually making PLA, which is what I call like a, a low cost, you know, technology to uh, 3D print parts. But a lot of what we do is on the industrial side. So a lot of what we actually run at Zometry is industrial 3D printing. So I'm actually going to go to outside of this room, move forward. But yeah, those are little workhorses. So we like the process, we like the bamboos. Um, you know, they're they're. Um, they, they work well for uh, for what they're doing and make his parts. Okay, so now I'm in the bigger room. Uh, this room is for our industrial additive manufacturing. This is a parts factory. Uh, so this is not this is something where we're constantly making and shipping components um, using industrial additive manufacturing technologies, and we have an army of machines. I'll kind of flip my camera for a second here, and you can see that these are larger FDM machines. So these machines are Fortis machines for, uh, from, from Stratasys. I have Fortis 450s. You can see I have several layers of these machines uh, in a row. And this is a great, uh, I could talk about build area, about 16 inches by 14 inches by 16 inch build area for this. And also I have several, a couple rows of Fortis 900s. So Fortis 900s have a build area of 36 by 24 by 36 inches. Uh, so I have this, um, I, I have an ability to print large format 3D prints in a variety of materials uh, like ABS, ASA, Ultim, uh, polycarbonate, PC ABS um, are all available uh, with, with these platforms. And what's unique about this, when I, when I do filament-based additive manufacturing, if you order an orange ASA part, we're going to have to put an orange ASA filament in for that, into that machine. So if someone else has a black ABS part and someone has a tan Ultim part, in order to do parallel production, you have to have parallel machines. So when you look at a factory, an additive manufacturing factory, when you have more of those boutique needs where you have different materials uh, per, like per order, you need a lot of machines. You need dozens of machines in order to secure a short lead time. Now, that being said, we have dozens of additive manufacturing, uh, F, like professional FDM Fortis equipment here at Zometry, and we still give plenty to our suppliers as well. So we have vetted suppliers on our network who are also producing parts with this technology because we have this large aggregate. It also gives us redundancy uh, built in due to the Zometry manufacturing platform. Uh, so it's a win-win for all of us here.
And I am going to uh, now kind of work, walk around a little bit. We have the other things that we have here, and this is, part, this is gonna be part in our dust, um, is we're gonna have selective laser sintering. So um, actually, I'm gonna pause for a second. I just wanna show you this. So let me go around here. and switch around. I just want to show you something like here. Just like we have plug gauges for everything in our, um, in our QA facility, one of the best ways to add threads to a 3D print is to use um, screw to expand or uh, heat set inserts, so brass inserts. And you can just see we have inserts, like basically we have the entire McMaster car catalog that just, that is just you know, kind of aggregated over time here at Zometry. So when you need to insert, uh, that's a, that's a great place to go, but it's something that uh, you know is a great value add. And again, that's just a select on your drop down and press buy. Also behind me, around my shoulder, there is a Post Pro 3D machine. Um, Post Pro 3D is a vapor smoothing machine uh, for additive manufacture parts. And now it's time for my favorite thing. This is actually where I started my my career in additive manufacturing, doing which is selective laser sintering. So I'm going to show you some SLS TV real quick. This is a cross section. So imagine I have a 3D printer that I can stack parts, not just on a build platform, but I can nest them in a Z direction as well. So I work my X, Y, and Z. Well, when I slice those parts, I get, you know, you can see those cross sections. And as I move up, this cross sections will go merge and disappear. And that's where the part ends. And I'm able to build those parts. We could do that in selective laser sintering. So this is a EOSP 396 selective laser sintering machine that we're running right now. And I'll tell you what's, what we're looking at uh, as I, if I could get a clear view. It's focusing on the window and not the, not the build platform, but I'll tell you what's going on. So I have this white nylon powder. It's, it's almost like a flower-like material. That powder is heated and recoded into the center area. At this point, a laser is actually etching a cross-section of that part and it's fusing that cross section also to the layer underneath, giving me a third dimension, that 3D of 3D printing. And then I lower my build area, recoder goes across, heats, repeats. Heats, repeats, and does that and goes through. I build in about a 13 by 13 by 23 inch build area. And I could go and create, uh, um, create parts uh, through this. And these parts usually are about a day to build, about a day to cool, and then we put break out. So we usually see a two to three business day on these parts. What's great about this is it makes it very economical because with selective laser sintering, you're essentially renting the part space that's in the, that's in the machine versus uh, paying for like the whole machine at a time. So I have, we, have, um, we have, have a couple here, but these two machines that are in the view right here, still like for, on a per part basis, outperform kind of like the other 40 machines here as far as a per part size goes. Now they, there's different size limitations and it's all like nylon or nylon, but it's just something to consider when you think about powder bed fusion and why it also becomes a, a much more viable option when you think about higher volume production in plastic additive manufacturing. I'll, I'll show like, a, I'll do a peek inside the dusty room, but this is a respirator only room here. Um, just kind of show you some post-processing. So we have some automated post-processing in here. Uh, that we use to post-process our SLS parts um, that, that help out. Uh, but what, this is actually where we do a post-processing powder mixing, which is why it's a respirator room. And even like, you know, by my feet, by my feet, I have a nice little sticky mat uh, to help kind of de-dust the area. Your favorite friend when you're running SLS is going to be your top back a lot of times because it, it just sticks with you. Um, we also have post-processing post -processing for dyeing parts. Um, and then secondary operations like drilling, et cetera, are, are things that we do here at Zometry. When we have prints finish in our Fortis machines, um, we will run them. Uh, we actually have automated support removal through sodium hydroxide bath. And just kind of showing you like the, uh, the baths here. So the, these are, for example, these smaller ones are, are gonna be for the 450 platforms. That big tank over there would be for parts being made on the 300 plat, or, or sorry, Fortis 900 platforms. So I'm getting near the end of my tour here as we're talking going about, about this facility. And I can't emphasize enough that this is just a little drop in the ocean of manufacturing that Zometry offers. This just happens to be the facility that we have here in Gatesburg as we started our program at Zometry, but the real power is in the manufacturers. 
our, our manufacturing network, we have fantastic manufacturers. Where we're able to celebrate the diversity that they offer to our network, what they're able to run, where we're also able to offer and kind of become a storefront for them as well. Um, we support the manufacturing industry because it's it supports us. It helps us build a be bigger and better company and a better solution for our customers as we're building parts on demand. Um, I'm happy to answer any more questions, but I um, that was our additive manufacturing facility. And you saw um, our QA facility and kind of vertical integrations. Uh, and honestly, honestly, just, you know, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out. Thank you, Greg. Great job. Uh, we'll hang out for another minute or so and let any other questions come in. Uh, Greg, do you want to give, since we're here on Manufacturing Day, you gave such an awesome spiel coming in, uh, any like advice or future looking or words of wisdom or inspiration for today since it is Manufacturing Day as we're thinking about our community, who we serve and how we help them thrive? Yeah, I, I think one of the things is Manufacturing is innovative and constantly curious. I, I think like uh, the, the mentality that you have when you work in a manufacturing space is a mentality of problem solving. Uh, like what, you know, you see something, how do I fix that? How do I make that? What's the best solution? Not just what do I have, but what, what can make this better? And you're always thinking like two steps forward uh, in the process. Um, there is so much problem solving. There's, there's so many opportunities within the manufacturing industry, uh, both directly as, as a manufacturer or in the peripheral, like when you're working within the manufacturing space. It's one of the largest industries in the world, and it is a technology industry. I cannot say that enough. Just like you look at a, you know, Apple or other software companies, like manufacturing is big tech. It's, it's the cornerstone for most of the innovation and patents in the United States. And you're talking about a huge, huge network of you know, of suppliers and manufacturers out there. And um, and I can't say it enough, it's, it's, it's really cool and really, really re rewarding to work in this industry. When someone asks you what you did today, you're not pushing paper around, you're like, I made this, right? And you're able to hold it in your hand. Um, yeah, it's it's a great, uh, like I really love the industry that I've worked in and this is something I've, I've worked in uh, for the last 15 years. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, wonderful message there. All of you, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, this recording will be available uh, later for you to view. Uh, so feel free to share it out and check back in. And Greg, amazing, amazing job. I'm giving you a round of applause. I know everyone else is too. So thanks for doing this today. Yeah. Happy Manufacturing Day, y'all. Take care, uh, everybody. Thank you. And cheers. Greg, you're the host, so you can end it. Absolutely.